Woodstock 50, not dead. Woodstock 50, not canceled. Woodstock 50, apparently now very much on and in a good financial position, according to Michael Lang, who's putting it together. Take that for what you will, but we got to go by what we have in front of us, and uh, this is what we have in front of us. On late Friday, uh, word came down that Woodstock had assumed a new financial partner to help them see the festival all the way through. Now, if you Google this, a lot of outlets are reporting that um, they've gotten the financial situation taken care of. But Billboard, who I will say has been extremely, extremely critical of this festival from the very beginning, and they were the first ones to really hone in on some of the booking agents uh, the talent agents that you know represent the artists, they were the first ones to be like, hey, these guys are concerned. They were the first ones to really start you know, digging up this stuff on Woodstock 50. Now, I'm not screaming fake news here. I'm not saying they have an agenda. I'm just saying uh, they are really, really uh, scrutinizing this festival. And uh, rightfully so. It's not that they're in the wrong. I'm just saying you know, everybody else is painting this merry picture of all these things we're just really reacting to it they're the ones that are like you know this this and this and this they're saying that oppenheimer and company the financial company that again according to other articles everybody's like oh they came in and they're gonna give them the money billboard is reporting that they're only there to help them secure the money uh the rest of the finances that they needed according to this press release that was sent out john tonelli who is the head of debt capital markets and syndication at Oppenheimer in New York says, quote, we are thrilled to be on board for this incredible weekend of music and social engagement. Billboard says that Tonelli's division provides a full range of wealth management, securities, brokerage, and investment bank services to high net worth individuals and businesses, according to a statement from Oppenheimer in 2015. But they go on to point out that the press release doesn't say whether or not Tonelli or Oppenheimer are providing financial and capital for the 50th anniversary festival or simply helping it to raise money. So where everybody's like, hey, they have the finances, Billboard is like, well, the uh, press release wasn't specific enough for them. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but the gist of the press release was like, Oppenheimer's on board and we're going to be okay, and we're going to see this thing through. So take that for what you will. But either way, you have a pretty large financial institution, okay, that manages the wealth and securities for high net worth individuals and businesses. So they have a lot of money at their, uh, you know, at their ready. I, I would think that this is all sealed up and done. That whether it's the company themselves or they're building a fund around this, where I don't really know. But when you hear about the finances of the festival, you'll kind of understand why. And not for nothing, not to take some credit here, but I was the one of the few people saying this all along that this thing is an automatic money maker. And the reason why is because I've been doing I've been doing radio for a really long time, and I understand marketing, and I know what works, and that's brand. And in 2019, more than anything, brand is everything brand is everything don't believe me go to kmart go to walmart go to target what is on graphic tees today brands coca-cola led zeppelin pink floyd it's all brand you may look at that and go oh look they're selling a band t-shirt that's a brand dark side of the moon cover that's a brand you know what i'm saying it represents more than the music, it's the fans, it's the people, it's the band, it's the attitude, that's brand. And and uh, Woodstock has brand. That's what I've been saying all along. 75,000 people, no problem. That thing is going to sell out. When they were in financial trouble and Densu was pulling out, I said, I, this, I really would like to know what's happening because this seems like a slam dunk moneymaker. Absolute slam dunk moneymaker. Sell 75,000 tickets to Woodstock? Easily done. Oh, the lineup stinks. Oh, it's upstate New York. It's going to be hot. It might rain. There's mud. They don't have the permit. <clears throat> Bupkis. Brand. Woodstock is a brand. And with that carries a lot of weight with people. 
you're going to have a lot of people that are just going to go just because. Fire Festival sold, sold how many? 10, 15, 20,000 tickets or something crazy like that? It was off of brand. It was a new brand. It was unproven. It turned out to be a sham, but they were able to do it off of brand. They got models in their videos. They got Instagram influencers to post the orange square. They sold drawings of what their high end, you know, glamping would look like. None of it was real, but they built a brand quickly. It crumbled just as fast, but it was still people were buying off brand. And that's what Woodstock is. So, so to sell 75,000 tickets, easily done. Easily done. So I don't know why a, an investment company wouldn't come in there and make it happen. Again, unless there's something we don't know. If we're going by everything that we've read and seen, which is that those permits are going to come through, they are going to get the permits and the tickets are going to go on sale. If that all checks out, there is zero reason not to invest in this brand. You're talking about fixed costs. Now, let's go with what we know. We believe the fixed costs of the festival are around $35 million. According to Billboard and a lot of other outlets, they're reporting that the talent costs around $25 million. Most of the higher-end talent, Jay-Z, so on and so forth, getting upwards of over $500,000 for their set, which is not bad considering it's a festival. You're probably, what, 45 minutes up on stage, you're going to travel up and down from a helicopter, most likely, I'm sure. They're all putting that stuff in their riders, you know. I'm sure that's in Jay-Z's rider. You want me there? No problem. 500K and give me a helicopter. To and from New York City, I'll be there. 45 minutes, you get all of Jay-Z. And that's all you need. He'll sell it. I know it sounds crazy. You're going to work. You're cranking it out. You got that $60,000 salary. Jay-Z's going to make over 500 bills in, in, in 45 minutes. In three hours, if you want to include travel time, it's insane, but that's the way the world of music is. Um, so with all the talent around 25 million, you figure another 10 million or so to pull off all your other stuff. You're talking about 35 million dollars in fixed costs. Not a bad approximation. Now, this comes from a letter that Michael Lang wrote to some of the other investors in the festival that somehow people got a hand of. And uh, this is what it says. Woodstock 50 is projecting that the festival will have a capacity of around 75,000 people. Let me pause here on the letter for a second. Apparently, that was some of the argument between Dentsu and Woodstock, that the actual uh, capacity fluctuated from 120,000 to 60,000. They didn't really know where that was going to be. A lot of this is going to come from safety and plumbing and security. We know Watkins Glen can hold a whole ton of people more than this but it just comes down to controlling that size of a crowd. I think that's a big concern for Woodstock, and that's why I think they want to keep this thing around 75,000. It sure is tempting that if you add another 25,000, you could be adding God knows how many more millions to your profit, but I don't think that's a smart move because, again, brand. And it's not like Woodstock hasn't gone through enough brand damage in their time with 95 and 99 because they have especially 99, you know, and they've been able to overcome that even still. But you can't have that happen again. That would be really damaging to the brand. So that's why I understand 75,000 people. So they are assuming a base ticket price, a base ticket price of $399, which is around on par, like we said, with other festivals. 450, I think, was the rumor before that. You're paying just around that stuff for Coachella and all those other ones, which have no problem putting in this amount of people. So I don't understand these people that are like, oh, he's dead. What? No, absolutely not. It has the talent. It has the brand. It has everything it needs. Some bathrooms, good amount of security, and this thing is going to turn a massive profit. So this is the letter. Back to the letter. 75,000 people with a base ticket price of $399 commiserate with other uh, pricing and other festival prices. Woodstock 50 projects that the festival will have total revenues of approximately $77 million. Woodstock 50 projects that the festival will have a remaining fixed cost of approximately $35 million and a variable expenses of approximately $12 million, leaving a net profit of approximately $30 million. 
So if you have to come in there and foot the bill for some of this and know that you're getting 30 mil on the other end, I don't know a financial institution that wouldn't take a hardcore look at this. It's a sound business plan. Even if it pours and rains, it doesn't matter. The thing is still going to go on. Money is still going to be there. There are things that can go wrong. There is risk involved with this as there's risk involved with everything else. But how many things can you put money into and get such a great return on? There's a lot of financial institutions that are going to look at this. And if Oppenheimer is it and they're going to secure the money, great. If they're going to help find it, I think they're going to probably find it. 75,000 tickets? Are you, are you kidding? What is, what is MetLife Stadium hold? Doesn't that hold like 55,000? You're talking about a few thousand more than MetLife Stadium? For Woodstock? For Jay-Z and Robert Plant? and I mean, this thing is going to sell out in seconds. And even if a majority of the tickets go to a ticket broker, who the hell cares? Money is still in the bank. MetLife Stadium has a capacity of 82,000, by the way. 82,000 in MetLife Stadium. The Giants can sell that out. You put any big act in there and they'll sell it out by themselves. You put the acts that Woodstock is has on their lineup still? What are we talking about? Again, this festival is very alive and could actually wind up being the great thing that a lot of us hoped it would be in the beginning, Twitter negativity be damned. So we'll keep following it. If there's any other, uh, you know, developments, which hopefully the next development will be tickets are on sale. You know what I mean? Here's your tickets. And by the way, 399 is the base ticket. Lord knows what other glamping or VIP special access stuff they're going to throw together. People will come and they'll pay and they'll pay a lot. And I guarantee you August 16th, 17th and 18th, you go on your Facebook page, you go on your Twitter, your Instagram, it will be flooded with people taking pictures and posting from Woodstock. Why brand? They all want to be associated with the brand. Look at me, I'm at Woodstock. Look at my seats, look at my VIP package. Look how close I am to the stage. Look, it's Gary Clark Jr. Look, it's Chance the Rapper brand. That will be the thing that dominates mid-August. Mark my words, if it goes off, if those permits come through, that will absolutely be the deal. I just, you know, there's a lot of, it's the knee-jerk reaction and the negativity that is so apparent on social media and in the world today. Like, it's, you sometimes, it's very lonely to be the only voice going, hold on, wait a second. There is a lot more to this. There's a lot more to this. So we'll keep you posted.